Hey, you're, nope. you're the SVP of the core SAP platform, is that correct? Uh, that's more or less correct. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, I so we're talking net, a little bit more. Here, right? That's that weaver, exactly. That's the, you're the serious the, tech geek, right? Uh, is that what we're talking about? To some about? extent, the, I would the, say, yeah. Even okay. though it might not look like Alpha? that, maybe I should take that off. Yeah, yeah, so you're good. This is, yeah. <laughs> it's the cute, we like ties. I, I took mine off. Okay. Based on the audience yeah. feedback and the focus good. groups out there, we I took off my tie going with the the whole collar thing here, being the blogger that I am. But you no basically one trusts manage me. the guys, that are the, the brainiacs inside of SAP, um, making all this yeah, innovation we're, we're happen? We're basically, uh, we usually tend to introduce ourselves as the guys who are closest to the operating system and it comes to what SAP is delivering in terms of application stack, technology infrastructure, NetWeaver uh, underneath, uh, and that's the, the, the main area we're responsible for. So it's everything from the application servers, our ABAP stack, our Java stack, what we're doing uh, in terms of security, um, internationalization technology is the whole topic of life cycle management to put around these pieces because we believe you need some, uh, let's say, consistent and coherent uh, way of putting these pieces together. Things like uh, Project Gateway um, uh, that mm. we're pushing a lot. Uh, so it's, it's about all these topics, basically. SAP, um, Bjorn, has been known for, we're just talking with uh, uh, other guests all through the day here, of going back in the history of SAP has always been pushing the envelope with software and, and trying to push the cost of the infrastructure down. Yeah. Even going back into the days of the mini computer, client yeah. server, yes. PC revolution, LAN, and now we're at essentially cloud. Yes. It's kind of a redo of client server, but lower even lower cost. Okay. How are you guys taking that core platform down in costs and you know, what strategies and what things have you done and are doing with yeah. cloud and mobile and, and yeah. a concept that we coined called fast data? Yeah. How do you make all that work at the same time servicing all these customers? How many do you have? 170,000 customers. Overall. Yeah, I yes, mean massive. Exactly. I mean, I heard 70% of all the beer made in the world is powered by SAP. And it's not just beer, right? It's just, yeah, so, <laughs> so no. we've changed that from um, eating yeah. your own dog food to <laughs> drinking your own beer, <laughs> you know? Uh, and being a German no. company, you've got a franchise on the, on the beer market. Okay, yeah. you own that market. But yeah, I mean, seriously, I think, you mean? Yeah, I think the, the, the basic, basic, basic approach that we're trying to take is really to, to combine the, the evolutionary part with the innovation. Um, that's what we've always been doing. And um, I mean, if we look at what, what our customers are doing with our solutions, it's huge investments that they are doing. So they're very often, of course, hesitant to risk what they have there. Um, they uh, seek to optimize what they have in, in that space and there's a lot of things going on um, with cloud um, as additional deployment models um, to uh, increase the speed, how you can adopt new solutions, um, how you can scale out uh, if you need the uh, the uh, uh, performance and, and the computing power. Um, but it's, it's also uh, uh, always a big demand from customers to see how they can get new innovations that are coming in. I mean, we're every year at the Sapphire presenting great new and hot stuff, and the question mm -hmm. is how do you get that out to customers? And uh, what we've been uh, believing is really that there's there's not this contradiction of just keeping things stable to allow customers to optimize uh, their business, but they, they need the innovation to be competitive going forward. And we've heard that this morning in, in the keynote as well. Um, so that's a, a big uh, uh, task for SAP, and we take that very serious to make that happen. And what we leave is basically that we need uh, a technology platform underneath that enables all these uh, kind of scenarios being compatible and stable on the one side, a stable core and having innovation there. What, does, the, what the, does McDermott mean when Bill McDermott your co-CEO, what does he mean when he says innovation, or Schnabe, I think Schnabe said this, not McDermott, consistent core. What does yeah. that mean? Is that a, like an SAP buzzword when he oh, says it's the a, consistent uh, core? Does that mean like one core base, or is no, that it's just not, a, It's. I, I mean, well, if you look at what we, what our uh, current customers have installed from SAP, the solutions that they have, this is definitely the core processes that they are running there. It's mission critical to their business, and uh, we go down, they might go down pretty quickly with their business. Yeah. So that's something we want to uh, avoid to touch at all costs. At the same time, they ask for new innovations to, uh, to compete with their competitors in a better way, to serve their customers in a much better way. So uh, what they are looking is how can they extend the edge around this core and how can we bring innovation in there? And that's exactly what we're delivering with our NetWeaver technology platform. And that's how we're going forward. And we basically see three large areas, and you've heard that uh, in, several times now. It's, it's obviously the cloud stuff. Yeah. It's in memory with HANA, what's happening there. Uh, and it's definitely mobility and everything that goes around mobile devices, smartphones, be it the iPad, Android, or, or, or whatever you name. And uh, as you can see from our solutions portfolio and how we're moving forward, we're bringing all these aspects together. And they span the, the on-device, the on-demand, and the on-premise deployment scenarios. And we try to do that, obviously, to the existing stuff, bring that in as non-disruptively as possible, like taking a HANA in memory uh, solution and put that underneath an existing 
kind of uh, business warehouse installation yeah. that customers have with huge investments. And at the same time, there's enormous potential for completely new applications. And, and uh, um, the, the, the trick will be to bring these two, two aspects close together. So you that's know, what we're jo for. Uh, Bjorn, John was asking about the, the platform in terms of the cost and taking cost out of the platform. I have a similar question around complexity. I mean, there's a lot of complexity in that platform, and yet there's such a drive for simplicity. Mm -hmm. You talked about the architecture. How is the architecture changing to accommodate that you know, drive towards simplicity? Yeah, I think that's, uh, I mean, f first of all, um, data has been spread around within companies in many databases and many systems. And uh, with, especially in memory, we now have the opportunity to bring much more of this data together, be it structured or unstructured or event-driven data. Bring that together and run many of the scenarios on top of that data in a consistent way. So that's one way of simplifying things. Then if you look at how applications have classically been built to take load out of the database into scaling application server architectures like a, cl a classical client uh, mm. server architecture, mm. um, a lot of the complexity and handling has been about data consistency, doing aggregations to get speed out of uh, and a classical database approach uh, to be able to run things like ATP checks, availability to yeah. promise checks and things like that. Um, obviously, if you now have the computing power with the database, you can dramatically simplify how your data models look like, how your uh, um, processes look on top of that, how yeah. your applications yeah. look on top of that. So that's part of the simplification mm -hmm. that you can drive forward with that new technology. You're speaking our language there, and I think you know the question that I have to ask you is, you know, what is big data? Because we were commenting earlier that SAP has been in the big data business for some yeah. time, and you're in the data business. Yeah. You protect data, yeah. um, but the speed is much more of a message here. So. What, what's your opinion of this big data market? You know, the Hadoop, open source, unstructured data out there, and, um, and obviously there's some security risks we're seeing, uh, we're reporting on siliconangle.com today that you know, 99% of Android phones are leaking personal information. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you had an edge that's unsecured in mobility, now all this new data is un unleashed yeah. onto the world, it's got to integrate in. <laughs> yeah, well, talk about for, big for, data, for, and then talk about the mobility. I mean, first thing I would do um, is, is really separate clearly between uh, having the data in, in one place and having it available for uh, amazingly fast uh, analysis for simulation uh, and planning on top of the data, and uh, potential security risks that you might uh, open up with by going mobile and exposing all the data to the outside world. I think that's things that need to be tackled, take, take, need to be taken very serious, and we're very serious about uh, especially security in, in, in that whole space. Um, but it's in general, it's two different orthogonal problems, I would say. Um, if it comes to big data, and I don't want to say the sizzle of some of, out of some of the demos that we're also going to see at the keynote tomorrow with uh, Hasso and Vishal, um, is it's obviously um, the, the combination of unstructured data that you have in uh, whatever, uh, let's say, especially in, in service cases, for example, where you have uh, a lot of text descriptions around data and you have structured data uh, with the products behind. And if you can bring that together uh, with a performance of in-memory, that's opening up these new scenarios that we, that we uh, get very, very positive feedback from customers. So that's really um, uh, kind of the, 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 the combination where it can now bring unstructured data out of the web or even Twitter analysis on uh, what are the hot topics, what, what, what do customers say about my product, uh, is whatever uh, my soda uh, g getting better uh, kind of feedbacks on Twitter uh, than the To uh, business intelligence, product. to business you intelligence. You get that stuff into that database and you can run uh, blazingly fast analysis on top of that. You have uh, tons of uh, um, data out of, uh, let's say, meters, for example, if you go into the utility business, um, where you're creating uh, uh, millions of data points uh, 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 every day, and uh, you have to, whatever, 120 uh, billion uh, data points to analyze, to figure out well, what's the data consumption models uh, of my customers as a yeah. utility company. Um, how can I go out to specific um, uh, customer This is new types. stuff. That's this is completely new stuff. This is new scenarios. Is this yeah. is new scenarios that you're enabling with the fast data with in-memory. Exactly. Um, and the cloud. Exactly. But you know, not necessarily cloud, but just fast data. But I want to make sure I understand the scenario. So it basically, you know, traditionally you had this big data temple, if mm -hmm. you will. You put everything in there, have a relational database management system, and now you're sort of describing this scenario. We have a lot of unstructured data out on Twitter and the web and Google and wherever else, but you're painting a scenario where you essentially bring that in to that, yeah. that data temple, if you will, but only the pieces that you need, right? I mean, yes. you can't bring it yeah, all yeah. in, it's too much, yes, exactly. right? And, and so, again, architecturally, things have to change to accommodate that, or? 
Yeah, I mean, obviously, I mean, the database is one piece in this whole puzzle. Obviously, you need some infrastructure on top. There's things yeah, like course. complex event processing um, to basically also define correlations between events, trigger events that you want to get out of it. You move up into the space of analytical applications that you want. And in the end, it's really, it's not just about this one, you have a data pod basically where all that stuff is mm. in and you're amazing at blast, but fast on top. But it's about getting the applications around it and moving that into the part, kind of make this part of the core processes that our customers run are running on our existing infrastructure. So this is an inflection and, point of an specifically that scenario of getting the infrastructure down to a lowest cost where you have this abundance of compute now with cloud. Yes. Right, yeah. now you're taking the software, pushing it into this memory processor, if you will, mm -hmm. for speed. So this yes. is, again, is this an inflection? I guess the question is, it, is this absolutely. a major inflection I mean, point in your mind of this it new is, architecture? It is, absolutely. It's, it's for us. Uh, it's like uh, the move from mainframe to client server, now within memory coming up. Uh, it's changing dramatically how we think about applications and how we structure applications, how you structure data. Uh, and it's an inflection point for our customers as well. Um, okay. Quite obviously for them, scenarios are possible that weren't be yeah. thinkable it's, before. It right? says, as, a, as Bill McDermott would say, that's a game changer. Well, and, what, and what about, um. I, in, in, that, <laughs> in that vein, I want to ask you about the notion of actually having persistent storage closer to the memory. Is that something that is also potentially a game changer? I mean, you know, you see all this flash and, 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 and or is it just big memories that are super fast and super expensive? Um, as an application developer, do you see that as you know, yet another you know, contributor to this inflection point? It's, uh, I think it's, it's, I mean, data sizes are growing every day. Mm. And uh, so it's definitely a point that will play a role, uh, that will, will play into that. Um, what we currently see is that with what we, we have with our own memory database, we're, we're talking to our biggest customers. We're talking to the biggest data sets that they are currently handling. And it's amazing how much we can get in there. Like we talked to one of our uh, um, uh, CGP companies, uh, one of our customers, biggest ones. Like it's 460 billion data records that we were analyzing uh, within milliseconds, right? Mm. Uh, wow. Do aggregations on top of that stuff. So that's really scenarios that weren't possible before. And uh, you get that at the, as a, at the price point, which is quite Unheard amazing of. compared yeah. to it's, you, it's, you heard about that. It's more than an inflection um, point. It's like so massive so it, change. It's, it's really changing things. As so are. the question that has come up on the cube here this yesterday, um, the was people are a lot of people that we talked to and people that have come to Cube have, are really here to, this week to to monitor the application mobility component. Okay. How is the core changing or changed for the application mobility? Can you one share with the folks what the hell does that mean? I mean application what, what, mobility. What, what uh, classically, um, I mean we've been very uh, centric about uh, the the desktop being yeah. the access to the the applications. That's how processes were built, like the, the type of users that were actually using those systems. And uh, I mean with mobile devices being uh, ubiquitous and and whatever two point uh, one point two billion uh, smartphones. I mean, it's obvious that this is going to be the device how people interact with the systems. Um, at the same time, it's completely new as the device knows who you are, it knows where you are, um, you have uh, a video and photo capability, so it's really changing and, and adding reality to, to uh, uh, virtual reality basically to, to what's happening there. Um, now, the, 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 the interesting question is, how do you get these kind of devices into your existing landscapes? And there's a lot of, not just SAP, there's uh, also a lot of other legacy systems where that, that contain parts of your data, parts of the information you want to get to uh, in a very fast manner. And what, what you definitely need is kind of a link between these new type of devices and consumption models uh, with be it iPad, iPhone, or, or, or these kind of things, back to your old system. What we're providing here is something we call Project Gateway, which is exactly this piece that maps basically from a uh, REST-based, OData-based, open, uh, broadly supported model on the outside to consume specifically for certain types of devices data and bring people uh, into the possibility or into the position that they can access data that is coming out of various backend systems, be it now your R3s, uh, 46 c system or yeah. uh, the latest business suite uh, release with the latest enhancement pack. So that's the kind of link that you need and that again goes back to the point of how do we bring this kind of innovation that's currently happening at, at enormous speed into, without disruption, into an existing customer installation. So Project Gateway allows customers to get access to those so-called legacy applications and, and data that's locked in those applications without from, a rip and replace. Exactly, right? from a strongly cons con, uh, consumer side driven uh, kind of perspective. So what's the data that you need? How can I get this in exactly those chunks in my device um, that I can easy, e easily uh, consume that? And it also allows you 
um, to somehow separate who is actually building these kind of things. So if you think about a scenario where you want a new mobile app, you don't want your IT department to spend months uh, to think about it and, and then a year later have it developed. So you rather go into the way, how do people, what's, how can they describe what they expect from the application? And that's what we support yeah. with this kind of model. Uh, and link that then back to somebody who provides the service with all the security and control and governance out of IT, we would, out of the backend system. We were talking to your EVP of marketing about the brand of SAP, um, and you're on the tech side, the platform side. Um, share with the folks, going back, go back, you know, dial the clock back five or six years. SAP was really one of the you know, early adopters of SOA, APIs, and you know, Vishal, we, we yeah. talked with him in the past. And then the re recession hit and the world started to change. What have you guys learned coming out of that technology sea change? You were you know, innovating there uh, from a tech standpoint. Mm -hmm. So to take us through kind of the, what's the core competency there. And then today you're kind of being everything to everyone around apps. Tell the folks out there, what does SAP technology mean? I mean, is, it, what, is, there, is there a couple, three things you can point to saying, SAP's amazing at these three things? Um, because the messaging is kind of all, you know, all over the place with apps and apps to everything. So, what is um, SAP technology? I mean, is it just pure software? I mean, you got analytics no. message. Is there a root technology? What we're, I mean, if, if we talk about SAP technology, we're, it, it's not a, a purpose in itself. It's not, it, yeah. there are some ends to it, right? And uh, I, I mean, what, what makes SAP strong is really the, the vision to run the world better. And we're, in the end, what we're delivering to customers is solutions. It's not about a specific application or, or product. Tech. It's about solutions, right? Now what we need to make all this happen and to also do that in a way that customers can actually manage these kind of landscapes uh, and they are running complex processes. I mean, that's, that's really the tough and difficult things that they are doing out there. Um, we need solutions that fit together. We need the pieces that basically work together and not just some bunch and, and, and pieces here and there that are uh, uh, kind of uh, 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 plucked together uh, without really fitting together. And, and that's, that's what what's makes SAP. And underneath, we need this technology platform and that's what we're building the technology for. So it's getting all the pieces together. There's tech under and, the covers. Um, some so it's, a, it's, it's about applications infrastructure. You need application servers to run, run your mission critical applications. It's about, for example, uh, uh, eight operating systems. It's about seven databases uh, that are out there. It's a heterogeneous environment. Uh, heterogeneous environment. Yeah. And, and, and you got the in-memory stuff. That's uh, tech there's from SAP. That's techy I mean, in-memory uh, stuff. There's base. gateway stuff. We go into this mobility space, as you can see here. Also, we're, we're uh, showing a lot of uh, solutions in that space now. The technology is an enabling factor. So diverse tech base. That. So it's diverse tech. It's not uh, one thing. It's not it, an algorithm. I mean, it's, it's not. not like, yeah, we don't have yeah. just one app. So Google says obviously. we have page it's, it's rank. A, it's a know? full bunch of stuff. Yeah, we go into it. the extensibility stuff. Like yeah. we have uh, a process infrastructure for eight, uh, application to application uh, uh, solutions for business to business. Um, there's things in the enterprise portal stuff for uh, end user usability. How to bring together basically um, all the various users within your uh, within your company um, and allow them access to uh, a ton of systems that they have in the back. Uh, in a consistent way um, uh, and have one access point to all these applications. I mean, this is what SAP is about, bringing your end yeah. users and bringing your customers, customers even, into your IT landscape into, with your business. That's, business that sets solutions. up my next question, which is if you're fast data in memory, cloud, and mobile, that's kind of yes. crystals up to that, right? So all that tech rolls up to the top, that's cool. Um, that's the first half of the game. We're at halftime now. You got the second half of your journey of tech. What's your game plan? What's coming next for you guys? Yeah. So if we're, if we're in the locker room at halftime, what's next yeah, for you guys? What's your strategy? I mean, first of all, we have, we have talked a lot at last Sapphire about the direction we're going. You can see a lot of proof here at uh, Sapphire this year uh, that we're actually delivering uh, the next steps. Um, I don't want to announce the products that are going to be <laughs> Come announced on, tomorrow. Come on, tell us, so spill no, the I'm beans. Not, Show not, the no, no. Sure. <laughs> We're live, tell the world. Um, so uh, there's, uh, there's a number people of watching. things in the timeline you will hear, uh, <laughs> uh, in, in, the, in the pipeline, you will hear about that tomorrow. Uh, we have uh, one thing out that uh, I can definitely share, uh, which is to us, and especially my area, very important because I'm responsible for that. That's, uh, we have our NetBeaver uh, release uh, 7.3. Uh, which goes uh, general available uh, on May 13th uh, this year. Uh, we had a, uh, so a phenomenal the fall, right? ramp up. Uh, no, we, this comes out end of this month. Oh, so you had another release in the fall, right? Uh, last a, year that yeah, was yeah. Uh, going out into ramp up. 
up uh, we've uh, we have as you know the the ramp up process where mm. we basically very much control what, what are the customer projects yes. we uh, provide a lot of support to those customers uh, to get some early learnings uh, I mean is the, the game plan I mean I'm looking for maybe is it like more categorical is it security I mean you know obviously the yeah. second half of you know if we're in the locker room is it more security more speed more performance what's the it's, focus um, I mean the, the, the whole topic we, we talked about these three things what we're currently doing is we're doing individual applications of course on HANA there's uh, BW on HANA that's uh, something we're we're seeing as the next big step and we get a lot of uh, good customer feedback and we're extending HANA to go uh, and support uh, business suite applications we're, we're uh, putting that uh, into the our uh, business by design solution and um, so that's obviously the next step here yeah. from a mobility perspective uh, we have mobile enablement for a business by design uh, we have the uh, mobility solution with Sybase on wide platform next release coming out uh, which will uh, also support connecting into business suite. Uh, I talked about Project Gateway, uh, which we'll see uh, 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 go to market. Um, so there's a number of things in the pipeline. Yeah. I will yeah, not yeah. give you the exact date. We have uh, official <laughs> announcement and there will be press releases. You look excited. How do you feel? Good? I mean, uh, come I'm on. I'm absolutely I mean, excited. SVP. This is great times at SAP. There's yeah. a lot of uh, Innovation. Uh, uh, hot <laughs> topics uh, happening. Uh, and we talked about some of them. And we see, I can see the, uh, 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 taking things uh, shape, uh, shape. I mean, that, that, that's what's currently happening. We have been talking about it a year ago. Um, and now it's really, um, you see that we have made a lot of progress. There's a lot of demand. The pieces really come together. The marketplace, and is, the so marketplace is, the is growing. Right is, we're on an upswing. There's demand. And you guys got it. Mo mobile Rock. adoption is exploding. We've been talking a lot about the, the metaphor of the, the app store. Mm -hmm. right? and, and we've heard a lot of your customers yeah. talking about that as yeah. well. And, and, and in the app store, you're the platform, right? And also the application. Right, you're both. Yes. So, so you've got to you got to service both of those constituencies. How do you yes, see that developing? I mean, that is a very exciting. I mean, the, the, the very nice thing also about SAP going into this uh, on-demand space is really that we had a lot of uh, learnings. Um, what does it actually mean to operate? It's a different thing whether you deliver software uh, to somebody or whether you deliver a service to somebody. And we had uh, over the past uh, months uh, with the. Uh, uh, um, uh, w with by design and and the go-to-market with by design, we had. Uh, many, many learnings out of what does it mean to operate such an environment, how do you get TCO down for such a solution, um, uh, how do you, can you provide a quick development cycles also, which is a very important thing because you want to innovate and keep innovating and pushing that out to a customer faster than you can do with uh, large on-premise shipments. And we're taking these learnings back into our on-premise uh, software and, and that's a very interesting thing and that's how we're, we're uh, moving forward in that space and we're trying to really bridge the gap between this on-demand and on-premise world that's one of the next uh, or, or the, the, the forward-going uh, to, uh, themes and topics as well. We strongly believe, um, I mean, a lot of the, the processes will always remain on premise. No customer is currently thinking about moving some of their most mission critical. Yeah, it's uh, not going anywhere. But the, the more and more they think about uh, like edge applications, uh, things that are not that much critical to their core business, to move that for cost reasons, for speed reasons into the cloud. Now, how do you connect this? And this is one of the big topics that we also believe we can best solve with one technology platform underneath with the orchestration capabilities that span across both. And then you can all of a sudden also add kind of our whole support offering around the solution that spans from on-premise into cloud into on, uh, the on-demise space. And then you have something like enterprise support and max attention um, and all the things our customers uh, uh, love uh, because we can support them in keeping their business up and running. Um, you can you can basically provide all these kind of things in, in the full space uh, across all these deployment models. How, how has the pressure from the CEOs uh, come down on you with the uh, Jim Schnabe's uh, mandate life cycles from 12 months to six. I mean, is that, how do you feel it's, about um, that? I mean, you got, but you, he, but he talked about you, like, you got best practices, actually, you actually, got a lot of, you yeah. know, prefabricated tech. Yes, you can it's, bolt yes, into it's that. Yes, pressure. The, uh, <laughs> actually, but it's, it's, it's also very rewarding and, we're, and we've, we've completely rebuilt our internal development processes to run along agile and lean uh, methodologies. So we're delivering working software every four weeks now. That's our tuck cycle internally. My organization, which is a 2000 uh, developer organization worldwide, we're completely running in this lean uh, uh, software development methodology. Huge shift that we've done over the, the last two years. And you see the engine running. And we're delivering nice. by design feature pack. 3.0 or 2.5, uh, 3.0, 3.5. You were criticized by the, you, you've, cycles, been criti you've been, you've been criticized on the delivery of by design in the past. I was looking at some of the coverage, but it turned out to be a good move because if you look at all the recent, you know, cloud crashes, yes. it, you know, it's not basically, you know, hey, you know, we made a good call. We tested it. We delivered it. You know, things are let's, crashing let's out there. It, it, it took us a while to get there. There's yeah. nothing to, to hide it away. It's a moving but, train. Uh, it's a moving we've, we've announced uh, uh, by design uh, 2.0 and now 2.5. 
Um, I think we got it right. Um, that's also the, what we see now with customer adoption, uh, where we are from an internal operations perspective. Um, the way how we can develop and uh, uh, kind of ship in six to nine month cycles uh, new versions of this by design and uh, increase it from a industry and country perspective. Now with a partner uh, uh, development kit uh, on top, we can also get partners on board to uh, build actually extensions to, to the solution we have. Um, and all the pieces so somehow fall into place and it makes a lot of sense. How do you get the real-time information from the customers? Because you know, we heard on stage, obviously, customer-centric. You know, you're getting more info from the customers. I mean, you obviously, with, with McDermott running sales and marketing and Schnabe running the product engineering, mm -hmm. Is it awkward there? I mean, are you how no, how real time are you on the how <laughs> no. real time are you on customer feedback? I mean, obviously with by design, you guys said you sat down with customers. Is it focus groups? Is it uh, reference um, accounts, reference architectures? Uh, we're really pushing a lot to get more and more direct customer interaction, and the on-demand model is definitely one model that supports that a lot. It doesn't help you if you develop a product that takes whatever years to develop and years for customers to adopt, and, and, no and one then likes you get it. feedback yeah, about yeah, it when yeah. you always move forward. Yeah, the whole yeah. thing is uh, very much <laughs> that's not a good model. <laughs> uh, it's very rewarding that Sounds you like have Oracle. to ship something and deliver something <laughs> to real customers and use it within six months, right? And you get feedback immediately. Yeah. That's one thing. The second thing is we do a lot of uh, 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 design partner councils and customer engagement initiatives where even, uh, where, where even our development teams, like our scrum teams, for example, uh, have direct interaction and uh, uh, we have customers participate in our scrum planning and scrum review cycles. So we're doing that big time to make sure that we do the things right from the start, from the design perspective, and not as an afterthought, kind of getting uh, uh, support messages and trying to fix it afterwards. So the whole model, how we work internally, that was pressure, yes, to go to that cycle. Uh, but actually, it's also very re rewarding for people because you get much more feedback whether you built the right stuff or whether you're completely off. And you get that pretty early, so it avoids you to, uh, whatever, do uh, uh, waste a year of development with somebody that nobody <laughs> likes. So that has changed dramatically. Okay, we're here inside the cube. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconAngle.com, and Dave Vellante, my co-host. Um, SiliconAngle.tv, the leading provider of tech coverage at events. This is the cube, our flagship telecast, where we go at events and talk to the smartest nodes out there. Joran, thank you for coming in. You're one smart Thanks content machine. You're awesome. Thanks for coming into the cube anytime. It's great, rewarding. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for coming great on. To meet you. It was great to be Appreciate here. it. Great job. Thank you. Uh,